I'm Dr. Bob Coleman. I'm the Extension Horse Specialist at the University of Kentucky in the Department of Animal and Food Science. I have the privilege of working with horse owners all across the state. And it's always a good time to talk about hay and how we're going to feed our horses. And when people look at their hay, they question, what is it that I have and how should I best use it? A lot of times we can get a hay sample taken and that will give us a good idea of what the nutrient content of the hay is. Sometimes we look at it and say, hmm, is this good quality or not? And while that can be something to talk about, I think it's much more important that we talk about what is the nutrient value that's in that hay you have to feed your horses and then how does that match up with what your horses require? A lot of times we look at things and say, oh, it's because it's this, I can or I can't use it. And while in some cases their nutrient content might not meet what your horses require, and you may want to select something different, but knowing what you have makes it a whole lot easier for you to use it appropriately and maximize the use of that hay to meeting your horse's requirements. So the first thing is, is how do we get a good sample? A lot of times I have seen people say, well, I'll send you a flake of hay or I have a bale of hay and I've taken a sample. That's really not very effective because what does it tell us? It tells us about that flake or it tells us about that bale. But it really doesn't tell us much about the hay sample or the hay supply that you have. So you need to take a good sample and there's lots of ways that you can do that. Um, we're going to show that today. And there is always lots of debate. You know, how many bales do I need to sample? In my opinion, I like at least 20. Uh, and if I can get 25 that represents the hay that I have available, I feel much better about that. Gives me a lot better picture of the hay. And getting a hay probe that you can use makes it really effective. I have one that I'm going to show you today that is the one that I use, but as a person that lives in the state of Kentucky, stop by your cooperative extension office in the county you live in and borrow their hay probe because they'll have one and then you can go and take an appropriate sample. So we're going to take a minute and show you how the hay probe works in the sample that you can take. So this is the hay probe that I use and I like it because I don't have to have a drill and uh, I can use it pretty much any time that I need to. It has a cutting tip on it and it has the whole tube to collect the sample. After I put it into a bale, I'm going to push down just to clear the tube and have the hay fall into the bag. So on square bales, you want to go at the end uh, between the strings. And with this one, I like it because I can just push it in uh, and then in good tight bales you pull it out and, and <clears throat> you will get a workout. So in this stack of hay I would go all the way across the face to get my 20 bales. And if it's in a good tight stack, it's much easier because the bales don't move so much. And I keep going till I get my 20 or 25 bales. And you can see it falls into the bag. And after I've done all my samples, I end up with a sample that looks like this. This is ready to go to the lab and have it analyzed. So then you need to figure out what is the question I'm going to ask when I send this in? What analysis do I really need in order to properly use this for the horses that I'm going to feed. So you can, uh, and there's a number of places, and again, working with the Cooperative Extension Office in your county and your county agent, uh, you can figure out which is the lab that, that they use that's most convenient for you. Now there is a cost associated with that. There is no such thing as a free lunch. So you're going to pay somewhere between $20 and $30 for the analysis, depending on what you get. But it's going to tell us a lot of really good information. So once we send it off, we're going to ask for things like moisture and dry matter 
uh, crude protein, some mineral content, fiber content, and then uh, we may ask for some of the soluble carbohydrate information, and it's also going to tell us the digestible energy value of that hay. So those are the nutrients that, as somebody that's going to help you with your feeding program, those are the things that I really need to know. Um, I look at moisture first because I want nice dry hay that I know is going to stay and not have a problem with uh, anything mold formation. So I would like it to be 17.5% moisture or less. If it gets down below 10, we may have some fracturing of the material and, and it's going to change a little bit. So somewhere between 10, 16 and a half and no higher than 17 and a half is good for moisture. Um, I want to know the digestible energy because that's the most important nutrient that we're feeding hay for. So I'd like to look at it and just knowing what the number is makes a difference. Um, the labs will calculate that for you or if you send it to a lab that doesn't do that, uh, with your nutrient analysis, I can actually calculate that for you. So knowing that, knowing crude protein, the mineral content, then I can go ahead and help you come up with a feeding program that will maximize the use of your hay depending on the class of horse that you have. So it's important. Take a good sample, make sure it's representative, send it off to the lab, and then we can work from there.